Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. Today we're going to take a look at the two most popular custom firmwares available to you if you have the Ambernic RG35XXH or the Ambernic RG35XX+. Plus. This is not going to be for the original 35XX, so the little mini version of this, the older version of this. So just make sure that you have the new one, the plus version, if you're going to follow anything in this video. And the two custom firmwares that we're going to look at today are Batisera Lite as well as MUOS or MUOS. I don't really know how to say it. We're not going to look at Garlic OS yet because I know a lot of people are going to ask that question. And the reason being is it's just not there yet for either of these two devices. There was an alpha build that was sent out a few months back and it's been radio silent since. So we're going to let him work on Garlic OS to get it up to date because I know a lot of people want that. But for now, we're going to take a look at two promising and really popular custom firmwares that might work for you in the interim. And this is just going to be a high level overview of just the setup as well as what they do. I'm not going to go too in the, in the weeds with different settings and all of that. I'm sure you could figure it all out if you go through with it. So just high level overview, what they look like, what they do, and go from there. For a quick reason as to why you'd want to install custom firmware on either of these devices, it's just a better experience. The stock experience on both of these devices and I'm not going to change my mind on this, but it's absolutely awful. Both stock operating systems on these devices are just bad. And Ambernic has just done the laziest amount of work on stock operating system for both of them. So we have to count on custom firmware to pick up the slack. And thankfully, as of right now, I think a lot of them have and the two in this video definitely have. So we'll talk about them instead. So let's do a quick tour of both of these custom firmwares and what they look like. And I'm going to be installing Batisera Lite on my RG35XXH, just to give you an idea, but both of these firmwares are available for both of these devices. Batisera Lite is the most feature-rich and progressive custom firmware of the two. And it's basically everything that you would want and need is available in it with the best performance. If you're at all familiar with something like Arc OS, it has a very similar feel to that, and you should be right at home with what Batisera Lite gives you. However, there are some drawbacks with Batisera, and one of them is the long boot time. So if you're planning on turning off the device and turning it back on, be prepared to wait quite a bit for the device to turn on. The other is the sleep mode is a little wonky right now. And it's something else to keep in mind because that just means that you're most likely going to be turning it off and turning it on every time you want to use it. And it might not be the best of experiences. I would personally go the Batisera route if you wanted a feature rich experience with just all of the frills and options that you could use. And then it's up to you to configure it to the way that you want it. Then we have MUOS and I'm going to be installing that on my 35XX Plus. But again, still available on both devices. MUOS is a RetroArch based custom firmware. So if you're at all familiar with RetroArch, it is basically that exact same menu. This custom firmware is kind of a middle ground between stock and Batisera. You don't get all of the frills and features and all of that, but you get just enough to make it perfect and worth it for a lot of people. And I'm actually leaning towards keeping MUOS as my main custom firmware for both of these devices. Now, MUOS is missing Bluetooth at the moment, and HDMI out is in its early stages, so keep both of those things in mind. Also, it is using RetroArch cores, so it's missing some standalone options that would have better performance, and one of the reasons why Batisera comes out a little bit ahead. But I know it's being worked on, it might get there at some point, just keep in mind that it's not there yet for performance. But just on the performance topic, personally, I see both of these devices as a PlayStation 1 and under. I don't think you'll have a good time with Nintendo 64, PlayStation Portable, or Dreamcast. So if you look at it from that perspective, if you're somebody like me who thinks of it that way, then either of these custom firmwares are more than fine and you shouldn't have an issue with either. It'll just be what your preference will be. With all of that out of the way, let me share the install process. And if you wanted, you could just take two blank SD cards and keep your stock operating system separate so you don't touch it, and then just try both of them out on each SD card, and then if you like it, keep one or however you want to do it. Make sure that your SD cards are branded, and so Samsung, SanDisk, something like that, 
and you have a branded SD card reader. So none of the crap that usually comes with these devices, throw all of that away. Stick with the branded stuff. And I'm gonna have some recommendations in the description in case you're stuck on what to buy. Let's start with Batacera Lite. Head to the link in the description and you wanna download the latest actual release and not the build root one that's pinned at the top. Today, the version is 2024-02-13. Expand assets and then download the first option, which ends in img.gz. Extract that file. Now we want to flash that image to your SD card. So we're going to use Rufus Portable from the Rufus.ie website. Go ahead and download it, and then connect your SD card to your PC using an SD card reader. Open Rufus and then choose Select, and you want to choose the image that we extracted. Don't select the file that we downloaded. Make sure it's the extracted image, or you're going to run into a lot of problems. Click Start and let it do its thing. When it's done, safely eject and insert it into your device, and then power on for a few seconds. To make things easy, I would suggest not having your device charging during this process. It just helps you a little bit. But do make sure that the device is actually charged fully, just in case. Let it go ahead and do the setup and everything until you get to the home screen, and you can now move around. You can use the menu button plus volume keys to adjust the brightness if you find it too dim like I do. Go ahead and press start and then quit and shut down. B is the confirm button right now, we'll change it later. Put the SD card back into your PC and then open the share drive and then open the BIOS folder. You want to put your BIOS files in this folder. Then head back and open the ROMs folder. This is where you can add your ROMs. Should be pretty self-explanatory here. Each folder is a system, so you can see them all. If you're here and you're confused as to what ROMs and BIOS are, the Tiny Best Set is a good archive of ROMs and BIOS files if you need a recommendation, and you can find that through Google or I'll leave a link in the description to a video where I talk about ROMs and BIOS files a little bit more in depth. Just keep in mind that if you do go the tiny best set route, not all of the folders will match the folder names for Batacera, so you might have to just move things over manually into the right folders. Once you're all done adding your ROMs and BIOS files, eject and insert back into your device and then boot up. Now, one change we're gonna make right away is press start, then system settings, front end developer options, then change switch confirm and cancel buttons to on. Once you back out of that menu, A is now confirm and B is now cancel and all is right in the world. There's other options too. If you push start and then network settings, you can go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. And I would suggest that because now we can scrape some artwork. Once you do that, head to Scraper. And if you go ahead and log in with your username and password from screenscraper.fr, which you'll have to create an account if you haven't had one already, then you can now scrape artwork on the actual device and you can start getting some box art and it looks a little bit better than it does right now. Other than that, there is a whole bunch of other options that you could look at and do, but again, not the point of today, just want to show off what you'd be getting and what it all looks like. Otherwise, just jump into a game and start playing. You're basically done. Now let's take a look at MUOS and head to the link in the description and then click download from our release build page here. Then download the latest release zip, so as of this video, it's 2403 plush. Extract the zip, and then once again, we're going to be using Rufus to flash the image. If you skipped here, just check the Batacera section for Rufus instructions on how to do it. Connect your SD card to your PC, and then open Rufus and select the extracted zip file, and then click Start. Then 
Let it do its thing, and when it's done, safely eject and put it in your device. Turn on the device and select your model, so RG35XX Plus for this one. Then you can set the time zone as well as the time if you'd like. Push B when you're done to save changes and start the formatting. This could take 5 to 10 minutes, and it actually did for me, so just be patient, let it do its thing, and then come back when it's done. You'll know when it's done because you'll see the MUOS home screen, and it just looks like RetroArch. But if you're finding the screen to be a bit too dim, you can use the menu button and the volume keys to adjust the brightness. Then you can just shut down, we're done for right now. Eject the SD card and put it back into your PC. Let's add our games. Inside of the MUOS folder, there's a BIOS folder. And inside of that is where you would put all of your BIOS files. Just right in there. If we head back to the root, you can see a ROMs folder. And inside of that, some subfolders. MUOS doesn't care what the subfolders look like, but let's add ROMs to the existing folders right now. So inside the Nintendo folder, we can add our ROMs into the Entertainment System subfolder, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance folders. Then I'm going to go to Sega and I'm going to do the same thing with Master System and Mega Drive, which is Genesis. But we're missing some systems, of course, so let's just add them. In the Nintendo folder, I'm going to be moving over my Super Nintendo, Game Boy Color, and Nintendo DS ROMs folder. Then I'm just going to create a folder called Sony, and put my PlayStation 1 ROMs inside of a PSX folder. Again, remember, it doesn't matter what you name these folders, they could be whatever you want. But I like consistency and I'm just trying to match what MUOS started with. When you're all set, just eject the SD card and pop it back into your device. If you head to explore content, you can basically see your entire ROM directory and all of your games. Then you just launch them from here. For the pre-created subfolders, the games you added should just launch right into the game and you're all set. Hotkeys are pretty consistent with most devices, so the menu button plus other buttons is the hotkey combination. So menu plus R2 is fast forward, R1 is save state, and so on. To exit a game, just push menu plus X and then get to the RetroArch menu. I would suggest saving the state right now if you haven't so that you have something to come back to, and then just close content to exit out. But for the games and the folders that we added, you'll likely get asked which core you want to use. So you just scroll down to the system and choose the core. So for example, for PlayStation, you'll have two options. And sometimes you might have others as well. Feel free to play around with whichever core you want and then see what you like best. If you selected a core and you want to try a different one, just highlight the game and push select and you can change it. Lastly, from the main menu, if you head to configuration, you can change a bunch of settings in here as well and connect to Wi-Fi. I'm going to leave all the rest to advanced users. And if you need assistance, I'm going to leave a link to the MUOS Discord where you could learn more and also talk to the awesome developer Adixel. MUOS is an awesome minimalistic style custom firmware, and it's a step above something like MinUI, where you still have access to Wi-Fi, some HDMI support, and a lot more. It's actually an extremely good option for these devices. And that's it. I hope you liked the video and I hope it gave you an idea of what 
these two custom firmware options look like on these devices and how good they might be for you to install them. Personally, I'm probably going to be sticking with MUOS for right now. I find it's the best combination of what I'm looking for, for features and ease of use and just quickness. So I'm probably going to stick with that for now, but I'm going to keep an eye on the other custom firmware options just to see how they progress. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow and hope you all have a good one.